day everyone, my name is Jack Southall and I'm here for my WWE Raw review for April 13th, 2015. Let's not muck around, let's get into it. So the opening contest for this match was um, John Cena's US title opening thingy. John Cena comes out and of course half the crowd sing John Cena's sucks, and which is great. Um, and the person who accepts the challenge this week is Bad News Barrett. Of course, we're in London this week, and you know it makes it does make sense. Bad News Barrett came out, the crowd loved him. Um, so then, so um, this Cena Bad News Barrett U.S. title match it was pretty good overall. Um, so, John Cena hit the AA following his, um, springboard stunner for the win. After the match, you know, Lana comes out, he starts taunting Cena a bit, and then Rusev comes in, hits him with a chain, which sets up that his rematch for the US title, Extreme Rules, and it will be a Russian chain match. Um, I don't know why they call it a Russian chain match, a simple chain match would have been alright, but... Is it going to be like a strap match where they're going to hold on to each other and then like they get to tap the four posts in order to win? I don't know, we'll just see. Anyway, um, we get a Divas Battle Royal number one contendership for the Divas Championship. Um, so all the Divas are following in. Paige gets a big reaction. The Bellas are on commentary. Um... Everyone gets thrown out. It was a bit of a clusterfuck. I mean, what do you expect from, from a Divas match with a lot of Divas involved? But then it did get good to the final two, Paige and Naomi. Um, they went in there for a few minutes until Paige threw her out. Um, then Paige won the Battle Royal, which I'm I'm happy for. Paige versus Nikki Bella. Even though we did see it at Fastlane, um, I wouldn't be surprised if Paige wins the title Extreme Rules, but... So, after the match, Byron Saxton's in the ring, he, she, he's talking to Paige, um, she talks about how she won her first Divas title match, first Divas title around this time last year, and her win at WrestleMania, and her rise at the top, and she's from England and all that, and so Paige starts to address Nikki, and then all of a sudden, Naomi just pops up from out of nowhere and just Beats the shit out of her. Um, so, that I didn't see coming. I don't know why Naomi... Well, she did get eliminated for a spot on the Divas title. And she's been gunned for that for a while. But a Naomi heel turn? Um, Alright, let's give this a go. It sh should be alright. I think she could do a pretty decent job as a heel. Um, maybe after this Paige, Nikki Bella stint, Paige is going to win the title. They might do a rematch on Raw the following night, and then this will lead to a Paige Naomi feud. That's just a suggestion. Anyway, um, so Bray Wyatt cut another promo. I, I don't know who the hell he's aiming at. Um, he talks about how... Fear is more stronger than love and all that stuff, you know. I don't know who he's going to face, but it, it has to be someone big. He just can't go from losing to The Undertaker to someone else, you know. Like, he's going to have to face someone big. I've heard maybe Roman Reigns, but we're just going to have to wait and see. So then uh, we get the Lucha Dragons versus the Ascension. Pretty quick match. Lucha Dragons beat the Ascension. No problem. Um, Booker T um, has an interview with Roman Reigns who comes out to a pretty damn mixed reaction. You can definitely hear the boos, but you can hear the cheers as well. Um, Booker T asks about, about Seth Rollins stealing his moment at Mania. Um... Before Reigns can answer the question, Suplex City chants start happening, which is funny. Um, he says that he's mentally strong and he, and all that, and he says he's beaten Rollins before and he can become WWE Champion again. And then Big Show 
and he talks about Big Show's interference. Ro- Roman responds by calling Big Show Seth's bitch. Yep. So, they do some more talk. Mr. Cock is fierce. It's just talking shit about Rollins and Big Show and the authority, pretty much. And then Big Show comes on the tron, cuts. Cuts off Big Show. Show brings up the fact that um, Reigns pretty much failed at WrestleMania. And he vows to make Reigns the biggest failure in the company's history. Then Reigns starts to poke fun at Big Show because he's hiding behind a Jumbotron and all that. And so... He then vows, you know, he's going to shove that Andre the Giant trophy down his throat and make him retire. If this means Big Show gets to retire, I might have to cheer for Mr. Cocker's fist now. (laughs) No, that's not happening. But um, as Roman's going to leave, Big Show comes in, beats the shit out of him, throws him into this London taxi, because you know how raw they have to do the big cheesy UK flag and the little um, cabs and the telephone booth and all that. So then um, we get, please retire, Chance. You sold out and you fat bastard. Holy shit. Um... Yeah, this crowd do not like Big Show. And then um, this ends up with Roman Reigns getting chokeslammed by Big Show onto the hood of a taxi. So, so uh, yeah, that was an alright moment. If Whatever this, please don't lead to a Roman Reigns Big Show match. We don't want to see Roman Reigns versus the Big Show. Just fuck off, alright? We've seen it enough. Just, my God. Um... So then we get Randy Orton versus Cesaro. So I think apparently if Randy wins this match, he gets to pick a stipulation for Extreme Rules. So um, Tyson Kidd interferes, causing a disqualification. Hooray, a disqualification victory. Kane comes out and he makes it a handicap match. And uh, Randy Orton beats the Tag Team Champions. Yay, that's good on you. You're making your tag champ strong. No, you know you're not. Um, back, so we get backstage. Seth Rollins tells Kane if he has any more bright ideas. Kane says by telling Rollins to win so both men can pick the stipulation, something like that, um, which I just said before. And I think he made, because Rollins versus Ziggler was announced, and... He wants the best chance to win, so he won't be facing Ziggler then. Um, Unsuccessfully volunteer Jamie Noble and a car battery to the testicle threat. Um, For those of you who don't know, um, Kane had a feud with Shane McMahon back in 2003, and um, he used a car battery on his testicles. I think that might be a reference to that. Um, But Roland implies that he should take on Kane tonight. Then we get um, Dean Ambrose versus Adam Rose. Ambrose just destroys poor Adam Rose, and that's it. Kane's just staring at a Who t-shirt until Big Show comes in. So, yep, Kane, Big Show, the excitement team. Um, Show tells him that he has to do with Beth business. Randy Orton is champion snot. Therefore, we have Kane and Rollins, and Kane will do what's best for business. Best for business, best for business. That's the three words of this promo. Stardust versus Fandango happens. Stardust beats him. And then Fandango tells Rosa to go fuck herself and saying that he should be sharing this gift of a dance with the world. And Fandango turns face, I think. So his old music starts playing. Everyone does the fun down going. Um, I think they do it because they know London's going to cheer him. But I don't think this is going to go far. He's still going to be a jobber, in my opinion. But uh, we'll see. So then uh, Daniel Bryan comes up to Kane. Yes, we've, our Intercontinental Champion isn't wrestling tonight. Good choice. Um, so Kane tells Bryan to piss off. Brian just tells Harks on Kane using please before telling Kane to go tombstone Seth onto the steps the same way that um, Kane did to Brian around this time last year. So 
Brian goes on until Kane just yells at him and leaves. Um, Brian tells Ben Kane not to be a stooge, something like that. So then Seth Rollins versus Kane happens. Kane's in his suit, and then after the bell rings, Kane starts taking the suit off. Um, Seth's not loving it, so two have a stare down. And so Kane lies down for Seth, like the little pussy that he is. And so then, ref counts to two, Kane throws him off. And so, J and J security are trying to talk him out of it. Um, but he, they're held out, but they get thrown out of the ring. Um, Rollins is not, he's pissed off. He's, um, causing Kane to cold cock him, whatever. And uh, after a few seconds, Kane choke slams him, teases a tombstone. Kane decides, you know what, Triple H and Stephanie aren't gonna like this. And then he lies down. He does the job and does a a bitch job. And Rollins wins. Very tough, Kane. Very tough. Then we get to the Miz versus Damian Mizdow. Pretty quick match. Mizdow gets the win from a leverage roll up. Just like Miz did last week. What's up with these matches with Miz and Miz now? Are they still going to have a match on the pay-per-view? They better. Because, like, it's not going to be exciting if they just face each other every week. I just don't get that. Um, primetime players comes out. Love me some primetime players. They need to start wrestling more, honestly. Yeah, I I'm loving the, the promos that they're cutting. But I think it's time for them to start wrestling on Raw and all that. Then we get Ryback versus Luke Harper. A match ending in disqualification. Yeah, hooray. Uh, Ryback gets the DQ because Luke Harper hit him with part of the announce table. Oh dear. Uh, Harper tries to maim Ryback. Ambrose comes out, drives him away. So Ambrose and Harper are having a feud now. So, Alright, at least it gives them something to do. I don't know what match it's going to be in. Maybe a ladder match because, you know, Dean got put through the ladder. But then again, what would be on the line? Would it be like a contract or money or shit? Like a contendership or whatever. So, oh, drop, drop something on here. Um, so, Byron's talking to Naomi. Um, tell him, why did you attack Kane? She starts the interview, you know, like sympathetic. Then she slowly starts to talk about her. Question the need for the Battle Royal after she beat Nikki Bella twice. And she's over being the kind one. She's going to take what she can, whatever. So, generic heel promo. But I, I think Naomi could do a good job, like I said before. Um, then we get to Dolph Ziggler versus Neville. Yeah, boy. Um, this was a really... Great match. I enjoyed it. Um, Neville did a 450 splash off the barricade. Um, Ziggler hits the zigzag. Go watch this match. It's awesome. Um, then our other word... Then... Oh, fuck me. Sorry, guys. It's, like, pretty late for me. I need to go to bed soon. That's why I'm getting all tongue-tied and fucked up. Um, Seamus, the human chicken, comes out. Um... Hit some bro kicks on it. So it's going to be Ziggler versus Sheamus at Extreme Rules. You know, they, they could put on a pretty good match, you know. Ziggler is, is awesome, of course. And Sheamus is not that bad of a wrestler. And now with his new heel persona, he can be a lot better than he was, I don't know, a year ago, last year, two years ago, something like that. But um, then we get to the last segment of the night. So, Seth Rollins and J&J Security, and Rollins is just sitting in a lazy boy or a bloody seat recliner, like a couch. Um, Rollins talks about the people booing him, telling them that it's not going to change, the face that he's the best wide weight champion of all time, pretty much being a cock, which he's supposed to do. He talks about Kane saying that the real men know when to lie down, that's what she said. Uh, Rollins calls Orton out to the ring and he's going to tell him the stipulation. Orton challenges Rollins to like a fight right then and there. Rollins is like, dude, chill out. 
saying that he needs the right opportunity. And then they tell the stipulations. Rollins, being a little pussy fart that he is, tells, Ro tells Orton that the RKO is banned for this match. Then Orton turns the tables and says it's going to be a steel cage match so that the authority don't get involved. But then again, couldn't they just climb the fucking cage and cost you the match? Or knowing Big Show, he'll probably just, you know, come up out of the ring. That's how he debuted in the steel cage match. I mean, remember last year with Cena and Wyatt? The fucking little kids, like, singing to him. And Cena's like, what the shit? And Wyatt beat him in the cage. But whatever, something will happen. Um, Rollins... Just talk some more shit. Orton flips his recliner over and starts beating up everyone. Hits RKO's to J&J &J while Rollins run, runs away like a little bitch. Um, overall, this was a pretty... I didn't really enjoy this show that much. Um, Ziggler and Neville was great. Um, I did enjoy Cena and Bad News Barrett, but... And at least we got Rollins and Orton intact, but... Everything else, I wasn't really that into it. Um, this Raw gets a... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Light just told me to fuck off. But it was a pretty bland show, so it gets that. The halfway there point. Um, yeah, this was a... Te um, that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like. Comment down below your thoughts on this Raw. Subscribe for more awesomeness from me. And uh, more great content involving wrestling. The Royal Rumble 2001 review, I have kind of finished it. I tried to process it today, but Windows Movie Maker just shut itself. And um, I'm going to try and do it tomorrow. And hopefully um, it will be released sometime Friday, the weekend, whatever. I'm not going to make any promises, but hopefully it should be released soon. So, uh... Yep, um, you can check me out on Twitter and Instagram. I've got an Instagram account now, at jackmanlol 31 so make sure to check me out on both of those sites. And, yep, just going to wrap this video up here. Hope you enjoyed. I am out in three, two, one.